So it's, I apologize, I got camp voice. So my karaoke days are over for a while. It's, uh, it's been a really good camp. We've got some things clearing up. Um, you know, some young guys have presented themselves. Some vets have presented themselves. So I feel like, you know, we're starting to narrow this thing in pretty well. Um, you know, Jay Bramblett has been everything that we thought he would be uh, in terms of his ability on the field, the job that he's done leadership-wise with our group of specialists. And then I think Jay's got a good presence in the locker room. Um, I, I know that as we've gone through this camp and there were some firsts for our football team in the way that Coach Kelly does things, I know that a lot of the veterans use Jay as a, as a resource in terms of, hey, you know, what is coach looking for here? What is this that we're doing? And, and I think that that became valuable in the locker room. Um, I will say this, while Jay is going to be our punter, uh, Peyton Todd has come a mile from where he was in the spring. I mean, he's really had a good camp. And we are very encouraged about his future. Uh, I, I think it's excellent. Um, so, you know, big, strong guy. When he connects, you can hear it, and his consistency uh, has been much better. Um, the kicking battle is still kind of up in the air. Um, you know, I know I know everybody had high hopes for what was a you know a highly ranked freshman in Nathan Dybert, but we all have to remember freshmen are still freshmen, and and you know it's a it's a quantum leap from high school football in uh, the suburbs of Michigan to um, Death Valley. And, and so, you know, it's been uh, Damian Ramos has had a fantastic camp. Trey Finnison, the transfer from Northwestern, has had a very good camp. And in the last probably, you know, six to eight days here, Divert has really come on after, you know, a little bit of an adjustment period at, at the start. Uh, Slade Royal Snap, he's been awesome. You know, kick returner. Um, we've got a bunch of candidates there between Malik Neighbors and Armani Goodwin, Francione. You know, that has not kind of worked itself out quite yet. And then at punt returner, we've been working Neighbors, uh, Sage Ryan, which uh, I didn't know a whole lot about Sage. And, um, you know, Cortez and I were talking over the summer about possible candidates back there to return punts. And, a bunch of guys came to us and said, go back and watch Sage's high school film. And he was an electric offensive player. And, and we put him back there, and he's a really natural catcher. And then Seven Banks is back there as well. So obviously, we've got some time here. We're, we're, not, uh, we're not quite in the game week yet, so we've got a couple days this week to continue to work through that stuff. Uh, in terms of core people, Colby Richardson has been great. Um, you know, West Weeks has been fantastic. Um, Colby Fields has been really good. Uh, Josh uh, Williams uh, in coming out of the tailback group. Um, Nick Demas coming out of the tailback group. Jare Jenkins I've got really high hopes for in terms of a big wide receiver being able to contribute. Um, I do – Major Burns, I, I wish you guys – I hope you guys get the chance to be around Major Burns. Guys like that make coaching so much fun. He is smiling every day. He's happy to be in the building. He's got so much great energy. I have so much fun coaching him. He's, you know, there's just, I feel like the collective buy-in from, you know, veterans all the way down to true freshmen. Uh, uh, you know, Jalen Davis Robinson, as a true freshman, has showed out. So is Perk. He's been great. So I think we're going to be able to, you know, in the first couple of weeks, get some young players some reps and play the vets where we need them. And I also think, and, and I know Coach Kelly um, subscribes to this theory too, is that when you have a young player, say like Harold Perkins or Jalen Davis Robinson, guys that are, are freshmen that are showing themselves like, okay, at some point this guy is going to play this year, the kicking game is a great place to get them used to the speed of the game and the physicality of the game. And so that if we look up in week six and one of those guys has to play 
50 plays in a game. Well, leading up to it, he's played 15 or 20 per game to kind of get used to it. And, um, you know, I, I, I could see some of our younger players doing that. So, overall, pleased. Nobody told me that there was monsoon season in Louisiana. Everybody told me how hot and there's never a cloud in the sky. And it goes from, you know, 95 to the biggest raindrops I've ever seen in my life in 10 minutes. So I wasn't quite prepared for that. But other than that, we're doing awesome. So with that, we'll take any questions. Hey, Coach, uh, Jacques Doucet, WAP tv um, When it comes to kicking off, if you find a guy that can kick it into the end zone and kick it out, do you not overthink it and just do that? Or are there times where, okay, let's try to pin him inside the 10 and sky kick and do some of those things? No, there are times. I mean, it, it, it's not just hammer away. I think with the kickoff job, it's, you know, it's not who's got the best ball. It's who can hit their best ball consistently. And that's what we're trying to work out right now. Um, yeah, touchbacks are the easiest things to cover, but there are times that we want to drop the ball on the goal line and get down there and cover. And frankly, there are times we want to move the ball, you know, across the field. So uh, we're still working through that. Um, and, and, you know, I think by the end of the week, we'll have a sense. Sure. We were in an we were in a two minute drill situation last week, and he made a 54 yarder to win the game in a two minute drill. So if you want to make a name for yourself, making a 54 yarder in a two minute drill in front of the head coach is a good way to do it. And um, you know, he's got he. I, I I think it's really important that we all understand, like LSU fans, um, as it relates to kicker, like you've been spoiled, like you know that, right? <laughs> the last two guys have been unbelievable. I mean, I'm watching Kate on television, you know, sent out there for a 55-yarder. He hits the upright, and it's halfway up there. I mean, he's he was a fourth-round draft pick for a reason. Um, so I, I think if anybody's got the expectation that, hey, we'll be able to go out and bang a 58-yarder because Cade could do it, I, I don't think that's fair to the guys in the program. But Damien's got plus leg strength. Like, 50, 52 yards, we, we feel good about it. Now, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens here in the last week as we finish up the competition. Because, and I should say this, I'm sorry, I double back. Um, you're not going to send the guy out to make very many 52-yarders throughout the course of the year. I'm most interested in how many 44-yarders can we make when it matters. That's what we're most interested in. Like, as coaches... We're not attempting very many 52-yarders throughout the course of the year. We are attempting a bunch of kicks between 35 and 48, and those are the ones that, that we have to make. Well, the beauty of, of at least field goal kicking is it's, it's pretty objective, right? I mean, they either go through the uprights or they don't. What we have done throughout the course of, of, of training camp is we have identified to the players we're working on skill and technique today, and today's an instructional day. And then there are days that we make everybody aware, hey, we are charting right now. And we'll go through a series of five or six different spots, make sure everybody gets rep, we film everything. And we chart everything. And you look up after about two weeks, and, and you've got a pretty good body of work. Now, there is some intuition. There is a little bit of gut feel. How is a guy going to react in a team setting? As, as those numbers started to clear themselves up, we then, because you can't rep four kickers in a team setting, you know, as a couple of guys began to separate themselves, now we put them into more, you know, two-minute drill, overtime, um, you know, team settings where where we amp up the pressure a little bit. But, you know, very, very I was very curious to see how it was going to go in the stadium the other day. Uh, they were all PAT attempts, but we handled it, you know, fairly well. So, um, 
you know, a lot of it's numbers based. And then after that, there's a little bit of intuition. And how do you think a guy's going to react to what is going to be obviously a pressure field situation? Uh, Coach, Jacob Verda from the Vernon Verda. You mentioned Major Burns' positive attitude. How do you help spread that character amongst the locker room as a coach? Uh, encourage it. Um, recognize it. Uh, you know, I keep, um, I keep a gigantic bucket of Halloween candy in here, and, and when, there's a, when there's a really good play or there's good effort, there's good energy, we, we throw we, – you come in here for a special teams meeting, there's candy flying all over the room. We're launching it five rows up. But what we're trying to do is continually recognize positive performance, positive effort in front of all their peers, and then encourage guys like Major and, and the, the other guys that had that, that positive juice and energy to uh, approach the work that way because that stuff spreads. Uh, and, and I wish we had more of him. He's a joy to be around. Yeah, hey, Coach, uh, Glenn West, Go 247. Just a quick recruiting question for you. I mean, obviously you guys are in full season mode now. Just what does the process look like in terms of getting players on, onto campus for games and just how important that will be for, for you guys as a staff? Well, first of all, as it relates to recruiting, my mother's got a Google alert on her phone for every time my name shows up. And there was a while there in the spring that that quote about, hey, we're not panicked yet, kept showing up. And it was always followed with, well, we'll see. Everybody okay now? <laughs> like, summer went all right. Um, we have got to make sure that we keep our foot down. Like we cannot allow the fact that we've shifted into season mode, um, take away from our recruiting efforts. Uh, J.R. Belton, Will Redmond, um, Corey Phillips, Jordan Arsenault, um, you know, Sherman Wilson. I think we have such a great personnel staff they do a terrific job of guiding us along and helping us get on, on the phone. We will be out in fall. We will be out at games both locally and in the south when we go on the road. We'll get out and we'll, we'll see our guys. And, and, and we still have plenty of room at the end and we're still working on a bunch of uh, guys and we have to keep the guys that are verbal committed. Um, certainly in today's day and age, uh, a verbal commitment just – Motivates other people, it seems. So um, we've got to keep grinding on it. But I, I think collectively as a staff, uh, starting with Coach Kelly, the assistant coaches, the support staff, um, we knew that it was going to be a very important summer. But we also had confidence that we were going to move the needle and we were going to get a lot of the guys that we wanted. And, and I think we did a really good job of that. And for those of us who had not, gone through visits in late June in, in the South. We learned a little bit about what we can do and what we ought not to do in terms of how we set up a visit and all those things. And, um, but I think looking back on it, there was far more good than there was bad. And, and we've, we feel good about where we're at, but we got to keep going, keep going. And I think everybody understands that. Over the last few months, what have you sort of learned about recruiting here in Louisiana now that you have uh, just a little bit more experience than when you guys first showed up? Um, I think anybody that believes that NIL is not a factor in recruiting is not being realistic. I mean, that seems to be a thing with, you know, the same two or three institutions that, that we, we recruit against. Um, I've learned how um, family-driven recruits in the Deep South and specifically Louisiana, you know, when you, when you have – a prospect visit your campus for an unofficial visit and you know there's 12 people in tow and they're serious about it I mean like all 12 want to sit through the academic presentation they want to be everywhere they want to see everything there's a lot of family involvement um, one of the things I have great admiration for in terms of what I learned this summer um, camps in the south are not as meaningful as they are here. There, a lot of camp in the north is kind of, you know, hey, it's always been my dream to go to Ohio State football camp. Okay, uh, guys look like me. Like, you're not getting a scholarship. <laughs> you know, and, but top players in the south, I mean, elite level recruits, 
will come to camp and, and work. And that doesn't happen a lot of other places. Uh, there were prospects from our state that came here and earned scholarships. And, and I think that that's, as a staff, the fact that a guy would be willing to come work when he's got 25 other offers, but he wants your place and he's willing to come to camp and earn it, that makes us like the kid just from Jump Street. And then we had a case where a guy came back three times. And I just, I think the world of that. And that, I think, is something that is a little bit different. Certainly in Louisiana, I would imagine it's, it's, a, it's a southern thing. Uh, but guys' willingness to come to camp and grind it out, um, that's awesome to see. And when it's a joy as a coach when you have a guy that you, you know, hey, let's get this guy in camp and see what happens, and he blows up. That's fun, right? And that happened a couple times this summer. And we're grateful. We are grateful to the high school coaches, specifically coaches in Louisiana, that did not discourage those guys. Like, there were some people that, hey, I got seven on seven tonight, and high school coaches were good. And we're grateful for that, and we recognize that. What do you got? Just kind of a fun question. The people at Ammart are very excited that you love the Cajun turkey and everything. I mean, when did you first become a, f a fan of that? You know what? My wife, my wife went in there, and she said, you know, you moron, your picture's hanging in the Ammart. The quote from Twitter is in there. Um, when I first got the job, I was in um, an airport out recruiting, and I had a little time to kill. So I put out a tweet to... Tiger fans. I said, all right, I'm new. Tell me, give me the spots. And about 50 people hit me back with, you need to go get the Cajun turkey from the AM mark. So when I was off the road, I said, all right, here we go. I'm driving down Nicholson. Let's figure it out. And I walked in. I thought I was in the wrong place. If, and any local will understand that if you've not been there before you walk in, it's not a sandwich shop. <laughs> it's a store that makes sandwiches in the corner. And, uh, but it was as advertised. And um, my wife was in the area one time, and she was like, all right, I'm going to stop and grab lunch. And uh, she didn't tell me where. And she walked in. She goes, I got your turkey sandwich. I'm like, ah. She goes, you, you're an idiot. I'm like, what? Your picture's, like, hanging in there. <laughs> That's not, that was not the intent, but we'll take it. So. I'm going to keep it lighthearted since okay. he already started this train. Um, is it your playlist that blares during practice? And if uh, so, what do the guys think of your uh, okay, so selection? This, this is fair. I took some grief for this on social media. Um, the players get the playlist. So in, in pre-practice, when we go through the run and stretch, which is 15 minutes, that's their music playing. Okay? When we're in competitive situations in special teams, I just like to play some rock and roll. Now, it goes both ways, all right? We had, we had a day where we had um, a tackling circuit. It was a long period, and I went straight Motown. We had Stevie Wonder, we had the Jackson 5. So at one point, I think it was Josh Williams kind of in line, but he's bopping around dancing. It was, it was Stevie Wonder. And I go, you know who this is, right? He goes, I have no idea. I'm like, oh, dude, you're killing me right now. Like... But the flip side of it is, in Run and Stretch, I'll hear something. And it's Ma Major Burns is mine now. He's my consigliere to music made after 2018. And I'll say, Major, who is this? He goes, Coach, you never heard NBA Young Boy? I'm like, no, I have not, but now I'm going to get into it. Or the other day, it was, I heard a song I liked. I said, Major, future, Coach. This is future. Now, we had a Drake song. I knew Drake. But no, it's, it's fun. It's just a little bit of give and take. I do think, though, you know, there are times when we are in competitive situations that we want to just amp up the rock and roll. In the end, it really doesn't matter what it is, but there's scientific evidence that says, shows that the beats, right, the beats will get them moving a little bit. The beats per, per second, the beats per minute, whatever it is. I mean, my Peloton instructor talks about it too. But that's kind of the, what we do. But I call it a little grief because... 
there was a Rush song on once and everybody went, how old are we? <laughs> that's, that's even old for me. All right, you guys have a good one. Appreciate you.